In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God.
brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness of God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, it is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it. Since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead. I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. She replied, 
no one to serve. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't expect people to remember what I said two minutes ago, let alone two weeks ago. But two weekends ago, I gave a sermon on the parable of the big tree. I mentioned that it is a parable of second chances. I also mentioned that the Gospels are filled with examples of people who have been given second chances. I stated that my favorite story of second chances is a woman caught in the act of adultery. This weekend, we hear that story in its entirety. Let us imagine how that poor woman must have felt. She is exposed, humiliated, shamed, embarrassed, and completely at the mercy of the crowd. I imagine that each and every one of us would have felt the same way if we were in that woman's place. The crowd is ready to stone this woman to death. The crowd has become the judge and the jury, and they are showing no mercy, no compassion. The crowd only sees her as a sinner who must pay for her sinful deed. What does Jesus do? Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. Not once, but twice. In between those two times, Jesus stands up and says to the crowd, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. There is a school of thought among some scripture scholars and theologians that Jesus was actually writing on the ground the sins of the people in the crowd. Only when the crowd realized that Jesus was aware of their sins did they walk away and leave the poor woman alone. After the crowd had left, the woman stands alone with Jesus. He says to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Not one of us is so God Almighty perfect that we have earned the right to publicly or privately condemn, judge, humiliate, or expose another person. Before we go making ourselves feel morally superior by pointing out the faults or the sins of another, we had better take a good, long, hard look at ourselves in the mirror. We all have our faults. We are all sinners. Still, we live in hope. The hope that we will be forgiven. The hope that we will be treated with understanding. And the hope that we will be given a second chance. Jesus treated the adulterous woman with sensitivity and compassion. Isn't that the way that we all want to be treated? And if that is the way that we all want to be treated, then let that be the way that we treat each other. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in the Lord God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God from God.
Having listened to the word of God, having professed our faith, let us now place our needs before our Heavenly Father. That all followers of Christ humbly recognize their weaknesses and seek refuge in Christ crucified. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayers. that elected officials work to ensure religious freedom for all citizens. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our that those who have failed in their Lenten obligations may begin again with trust in God's mercy. We pray to the Lord, Lord that God will grant answers to all the prayers and needs of St. Elizabeth and Seton Parish. We pray to the Lord, Lord we lead the departed into the light of your dwelling place, that they may gaze upon you for all eternity, including Nancy Hannah, Melissa Doray. We pray to the Lord, Lord for all the intentions listed in our parish book of prayer and for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord, Lord God of all goodness, listen to the prayers of your children and grant us growth in faith during this season of Lent. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 